when you see a company like J.P. Morgan, who paid a $920 million fine to the Justice Department for suppressing gold and silver, accumulate over 45 million ounces of gold and 1.2 billion ounces of silver, the largest physical position of metals ever owned off their books. I strongly urge people to listen to what I'm saying and to consider owning gold and silver as significant historical wealth and not rely upon a dollar which is at the end of its, really, its Keynesian fiat experiment. Why are the super private and well-informed investors draining the London Metals Exchange and COMEX of all its metal to where the London Metals Exchange has the least amount of silver ever in the history of the exchange since they started taking records? Why has 70% of all the registered silver been drained off of COMEX over the past 18 months? Why do we see in one day 45% of all the kilo bars in gold, 26 million ounces gone in one day delivered off of COMEX? Who's got that kind of bread? Why do we see two weeks after that, 5% of all the 100 ounce gold bars on COMEX delivered off of COMEX? When you deliver a bar off the COMEX exchange, it's a one-way street because you no longer have the liquidity. But we had some very large orders recently that some of them have become public because one of the clients that I did an order with wanted me to tell the world how difficult it was for her to get $50 million out of the bank to place an order with us. It took her almost five days. And she wanted me to tell everyone that get your money out of the banks because it took me five days to get my money with threats of calling the regulators to get my money out of the bank. So anyone who pulls metal off a of COMEX like this, these massive deliveries we've seen, where in one day all this stuff is disappearing and this bleed down of supply, Normally, they would take it out of one category called registered. Those are the bars that can be delivered and move it into eligible. Those are bars that they're eligible if, if I want to put them into register, but they're not for sale. They're mine. I'm hanging on to them. Not for sale. And that's what a lot of people would do. They would just keep them in an eligible category. Well, instead of doing that and leaving them in the safety of an eligible category, that means if one of my clients who has a whole bunch of thousand ounce bars wants to sell them and take advantage of Elon Musk's generous offer, we could transfer them from eligible to registered and Elon could then take possession of them. Registered means all of the numbers are already validated on the bars, the weights, the bar numbers, the authenticity goes from eligible to registered. He can take possession of them and pay me my money, but not if they're not in the COMEX ecosystem. So when all of this stuff is delivered off of COMEX, it's a big deal. Where's it all going? There was just an article by Reuters and Bloomberg, and it said that the central banks bought a record 399 tons of gold uh, worth over 20 billion in the third quarter of 2022. Uh, 340% higher than Q3 2021, almost double the previous record of 241 tons in Q3 2018. But Bloomberg called the buyers of all of this gold and silver mystery whales. And they postulated that the mystery whales buyers were likely either China, Russia, Saudi Arabia, or India. And they also noted that the central bank purchases were nearly double the previous record. So what do all of these countries have in common? Yes, they're BRICS. So you are seeing massive drawdowns, huge amounts being drawn down off the exchanges. And it's a one-way street because once it leaves COMEX, it's lost its liquidity. These deliveries, these massive drawdowns in metals, it's been happening since I started talking about the others in 2020. It has not stopped. In fact, it's increased massively. And who's been buying more gold at any time since 1967? Oh yeah, the central banks. Why are they buying gold and silver? Oh yeah, gold's a tier one reserve asset and everyone's moving away from the dollar. And you see how all of these things start to come together. I think we often take the dollar's reserve status for granted, simply because we've grown up under this system. But the truth is, is that reserve currencies come and go every hundred years or so. And the dollar was the only choice when we moved to a full fiat currency system because of Bretton Woods and the trillions of dollars that have all been circulating globally. But I think that we are looking at a period of time right now where these countries are beginning to break away and accentuate themselves against the century old, centuries old Western dominance. I think the handwriting is on the wall. We will wake up at some point, probably sooner than later, to a new system that will challenge the dollar for its world reserve. 
You already have China saying to Russia that we are ready to get serious right now and build the energy infrastructure with Russia and the other BRICS nations. You can see it. It's happening. And when that announcement is made and OPEC and Saudi Arabia dump the dollar as its sole settlement currency and all of these countries on the planet who have had to own dollars for 50 years start to sell them because the dollar becomes a hot potato. This is your great reset moment where the dollar comes flooding home creating massive inflation, hyperinflation, and the byproduct of inflation is higher interest rates to compensate for the loss of purchasing power. I really do believe that if you are not a contrarian, you will be a victim. I really do believe that if you are fully invested in dollars, you're destined to go broke. And I want people to know that when I talk about gold and silver, it is never, ever, ever, go back and listen to anything I've said for the past decade, gold is not an investment. Silver is not an investment. It may perform like one, may make you wealthy, but they are wealth. 5,000 year wealth that has outlived every world war, German hyperinflation, the Great Depression, and every pandemic. And when you see the most well-funded, well-informed, influential traders on the planet accumulating the stockpile of metal that they are, when you see a company like JP Morgan, who paid a $920 million fine to the Justice Department for suppressing gold and silver, accumulate over 45 million ounces of gold and 1.2 billion ounces of silver the largest physical position of metals ever owned off their books when you see that the most sophisticated well-informed influential traders on the planet massively accumulating metals and de-dollarizing whether it be the u.s commercial banks or the foreign central banks, when you see the rise of the others, the most influential and well-informed private traders draining the London Metals Exchange, draining the COMEX, when you see gold reclassified tier one, when you see all of these countries coalescing, when you see all the 13 OPEC producing countries on the Belt Road, the US isn't part of it. When you see 200 countries of the IMF from around the world say we want a new system, why did they choose gold as a tier one reserve asset? Why not special drawing rights from the IMF? All of these things put together in and of themselves, okay, put them all together and look at it as a sphere and you can see the dollar screwed. You can see the West is living on borrowed time. When you see all of this stuff together, if you don't see the fact that being in dollars fully and exclusively is a very bad idea, then you're not looking at the world the way that I am. And I think it's just a matter of time before people in this country have a religious experience because when the dollar gets dumped by OPEC, which it will, uh, you can see it. You can see the fact they don't even take Biden's phone calls. They are joining BRICS. They are moving away from the West to a, a massive majority of human population that is not going green. It's helmet. And this is why you own gold and silver. It is wealth. This is why they're buying it because it's wealth. It's not an investment. It's wealth. And I strongly urge people to listen to what I'm saying and to consider owning gold and silver as significant historical wealth and not rely upon a dollar which is at the end of its really its Keynesian fiat experiment and it's coming to an end and I think it won't be a pleasant experience.